In today's episode, I will take on a big and difficult challenge, conquering the world in Hearts of Iron 4. The challenge lies in the fact that I haven't played this game in a very long time and I don't have many hours in it. In short, I'm a total noob in this game. That's why I'll be playing this campaign as Germany, starting with the most popular scenario, 1936 Iron Man and historical focuses. I also have all the DLCs, but I have no clue what mechanics they introduce. I'm curious if this is a tougher challenge than conquering the world in EU4 or Victoria 3, or will I run into some issues and you, are you curious about that? Let's get started. Welcome, imperialists. Lucas here. Since I plan to record more Hearts of Iron on this channel, I'm counting on your comments with tips and possible ideas for campaigns here in the comments. First, I'll deal with all these notifications that I had here. I remember that in research, you started with research speed first, then moved on to industry, and then what are these purple icons? Never mind, I'm developing infantry weapons. What? What is that? I wonder if this will be the first mistake to make your eyes burn, because I know that political power was usually very important. As for building factories, I'll start with civilian factories. In those places where there's high infrastructure percentage. I know there are quite a few, but I want to have three to four full construction lines. And now something I totally don't get and don't like doing, managing military factories. I never know what or how much I should have here and how am I supposed to know. In the end, I set up something like this. Whether it's right, I'm not entirely sure. I remember that close air support planes were very important, trucks were useful, and I think we have a few light tank divisions, so I'll be making some small reinforcements, at least for now. Artillery infantry weapons and infantry supply were always important. Now, the national focus tree and I need to read everything here. I'll start with the Rhineland, just so I don't mess up and accidentally overthrow the painter later on. Division organization. I think this works, right? This guy will be the marshal because he has more of those sword symbols, and I'll set the front line on the border with Poland, since that's probably the first country I'll be at war with. Probably. That's a lot of boring stuff done. Now, step by step, I'll need to prepare the country for the first war. Or rather, the second war. Remilitarization of the Rhineland. Of course, I'm playing with historical settings, so there are zero surprises here. France agreed. I also hired the first advisor who gives me more political power. And I started working on the four-year plan. I remember once watching a Hawaii video and someone did something where they provoked an early war with the Netherlands because the Netherlands has its puppet. And that puppet has a lot of resources I need. And I also started training new divisions right away, although I think there was a different way of doing that. Oh, I think I got it. What are these new military trees? Could it be that mission trees got their own mission trees? Oh no, those are corporate trees. After a while, I also hired Yalmar Schacht, who speeds up civilian factory construction. Although, from what I see, I should probably switch to military factory construction as soon as possible. I think these researches will help me with that. As the Spanish Civil War broke out, I decided to send volunteers there to gain experience. At least, that's how it used to be done. I remembered that logistics exist in this game, so I added trains to the construction queue. Actually, I'll even increase that number a along with the number of trucks. As for those German tank divisions, well, right now I can't say they're good. I sent my armored forces to Toledo because the terrain here is better, where they'll likely attack more effectively. At least that's what I gather from the template. I'm also switching to a war economy, because I can. Well, actually, I couldn't because some strikes started happening. <coughs> But either way, my factories were starting to build pretty nicely. Yes, the game just informed me that starting a war with the Netherlands would take away all my bonuses for building military factories, so I guess I won't. Just when I finished researching part of the industrial tree, the Anschluss of Austria became possible. Meanwhile, things in Spain are going well, as usual. I annexed Austria, which means I have a lot of divisions that I need to convert to my template. But thanks to this, I finally have enough civilian factories, so let the ones that are under construction finish, and now I'll just go full military factories. As for my army commanders, I'm investing everything in anything that gives infantry attack, because after all, that's what I have the most of. And I must admit, I'm surprised how fast these military factories are being built, but with all these bonuses, maybe I shouldn't be so surprised. After the Anschluss, it's probably time to forge closer cooperation with other countries. As for research, I'm already working on everything from 1938, because there's really nothing else to research. I also sent a military attaché to Japan, I totally forgot about that mechanic. This should speed up gaining army experience now. The Chinese didn't like it, but I didn't care at all. Regarding my factory trees, if that's what they're called, I'm focusing first on increasing production, and then depending on what bonuses those factories 
factories give me. In artillery, of course, it's cheaper construction, but then I'm doing everything that increases soft attack. For tanks, I went with man, more or less in that direction. I'm not sure if this is the right choice, let me know. For infantry weapons, I also focused on production, but here I'm debating whether to go for breakthrough or soft attack. Tough choices. In aviation, I went for Junkers, everything that increases attack and ground support. I downsized Czechoslovakia. But still, give me more, I redesigned my basic infantry template to something like this. I added artillery to increase soft attack, a few support companies, which should be good for both attack and defense. But honestly, when it came time to design my own tank, WTF, what are these engines, armor, guns, what am I supposed to add here? So I decided to follow an online guide. And according to the guide, I should focus on soft attack and keep reliability above 60%. With the equipment I have available now, this is all I can do. And I think I've been unnecessarily producing those light tanks all along. Oops. Thanks to cooperation with the Russians, I have a research bonus and I don't know what to focus on. Better engines, armor, or maybe the tank chassis. Where do you research additional systems? Better guns for this. If you're curious about what happened in Spain, I'll be honest, I totally forgot about it, but they managed on their own. My tanks definitely played a key role here. I'm about to run out of space to build military factories. What's going on? In March 39, I remembered something like Air Force. Yes, incredible, but I really am an ignoramus when it comes to this game especially since I don't have much of an air force. I also started buying large amounts of fuel to replenish my reserves. I reclaimed land from the Lithuanians, captured all of Czechoslovakia, which probably surprised the Poles, not going to lie. It surprised me too, because I forgot I needed to secure the front line. Some nations wanted peace or to join my faction, but I wasn't interested at all. The Czechs, however, reminded me that I need troops to suppress rebellions, so I repurposed my basic cavalry template for that. Finally, I only have to sign the Ribbentrop-Molotov pact, which the Russians, of course, agreed to, so the time has finally come. Danzig or war? And just in time, because I've run out of space for military factories in Germany. I have also increased conscription. Oh no, planes can be upgraded too. Poland, of course, refused to hand over Danzig. It's November 20th, so sorry. Kids went to school earlier. All that's left is to execute the invasion plan. And since everything is green, I don't anticipate any problems here. I advanced really quickly. Poland fell in less than a month. The war ended so quickly that France didn't have time to join the fight, which actually is a bad thing. For now, I'm at war with these countries. The Russians demanded half of Poland, and I'll give it to them. I'm not sure I'm ready for a war with Russia yet, especially since now I wanted to attack the Netherlands, and then Belgium, and it went really fast with them. Was it always this easy? And now what really intrigues me is whether I can launch a naval invasion of the British Isles before taking down France. Since I was still figuring out how to even execute these landings, I declared war on France. It should be much easier here, although somewhere along the way I lost my tanks, which I had deployed. Luckily for me, at this moment, the French forces are so weak that even without my armored divisions, which I forgot about, I'm capturing Paris and winning even faster than with Poland. And it turns out I can get their entire massive fleet from France. Additionally, I took the rest of continental France. And now am I creating some kind of puppet state? I don't know how that works. Oh my god, what just happened here? But I think I actually managed to capture the entire French fleet. And thanks to that, I somehow landed in the British Isles. I like these changes because it used to be much harder. I'm not sure if this is the right way to do it, but I'm taking my three divisions and ordering them to get back to the UK. And I think my forces are landing in the UK somehow. Definitely making fast progress in the north, not so much in the south. But why hold back? I'm going straight for London. And I think I just won World War II. Wow! That was really easy peasy. I definitely want to make Canada my puppet. I'm also taking the British fleet for myself. Wow, and now what do I need to manage? I don't get it. Are these territories mine? Is everything that's blue now mine? Actually, no, there's also an Italian part here. Doesn't matter. I need to manage my army because I'm not keeping track of them. Turns out that while managing the army, I had 60 unused infantry divisions. But at this point, it might be time to deal with the United States. Does anyone know how to declare war on them? Oh, the UK has somehow survived. I think I messed something up during the peace deal. From my puppets, I'm managing to take large amounts of resources at the cost of just one civilian factory. Normally, it would be eight. In fact, that's what I initially wanted to do with the Netherlands. At this point, I think I, as Germany, am not at war. I'm a peaceful country. Well, okay, the Western European states have fallen. So now I can either focus on the Soviet Union or prepare an invasion of the United States. It's probably better to attack the United States because they might not be ready for war yet. So I'm laying claims to New York. Before the invasion of America, though, I need to improve some supply lines in Canada. And since I have no idea what I'm doing, I'll just max out the ports. Max out the transport lines. 
I'm leaving the logistics unchanged because, from what I've noticed, they are insanely expensive. I'm also making sure my armies use the more modern supply methods, of course using trucks. And basically, I'm also positioning my armies to station at the US border. It will probably take them some time to get there. I also ended up with some strange divisions. I don't know where they come from, but I'm disbanding them all. Although in one campaign a long time ago, I remember you could create divisions using someone else's manpower. And they would be yours, but they were actually from, for example, Australia. German Australia. I also changed my resource imports, so now everything comes from either India or Malaya, and actually it might be a good idea to switch to free trade this time. This will speed up production, research and factory output, I think I'll do that. Even if I'm short on some resources, like I am now, I'll just run with two factories and catch up. Okay. Maybe I overdid it, but we'll see how it goes. I'm a noob, I can learn. In the meantime, I also remembered that there's something called the intelligence agency in this game, so I think it's time to develop it. And yet another new mechanic I'll have to learn at some point. Ugh. I'll just click on it, whatever. Okay, I improved the supply in some places, but unfortunately, not everywhere. Luckily, Japan just attacked the United States, so maybe they won't have as many divisions on my border. So in August of 41, I attacked the US without allies. Of course, I forgot to assign an attack plan, or assign air wings to divisions. Does that even matter? I don't know. Why isn't my army doing anything? Hello? 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 Oh, because Canada isn't participating in the war. But I think I'm fixing that now. I also started developing the German Wunderwaffe, just in case things don't go well with the US. Although looking at it, it's not bad so far. And I'm pushing back the American divisions everywhere. And actually, the offensive made my supply issues disappear completely. Well, maybe not here. I made some progress, but I had to stop because I really started running out of equipment and my armies began taking massive losses. So I'm wondering, do I really need to develop my logistics so much during offensives? I guess. I think I forgot about Alaska. Seems like it. Under Kansas and St. Louis, I think I'll be able to trap the American forces in a pocket. Well, good question. Did I do it or not? Everything's so overlapping here that I'm not sure. So I took St. Louis. And now we've got part of the American army in a pocket. God, destroying these pockets is really time consuming and I need a ton of divisions to do it. But fortunately, my new armored divisions, which I totally forgot I had in Europe, have arrived at the front. Unfortunately, only 24 and for some reason they're not trained, but they'll just train in battle. I made this template, not sure if it's any good because I got it from the internet and I think that's what I needed to finally push through the Americans with 24 armored divisions in this template. Because everything collapsed and I'm taking everything nicely on all fronts and I somehow won. There's still the capital in Dallas, but but the war with the US is won. And I'm curious whether it's better to conquer the US for myself or make them a puppet. I don't know, you can advise me on that. For now, I'm conquering it for myself and I'll see what comes of it. Beautiful name. I also expect that since the US was so tough, what will happen here with the Soviet Union? I'm not rushing the invasion of the Soviet Union though. First, I want to conquer Scandinavia. Denmark has already fallen and I feel like I might need nukes during this war. Unless Japan declares war on me. How do I conquer Japan? Do I need to launch naval invasions from here? No, I also have a border with Japan so maybe I'll have a way to land there. I guess this is the point in the game where I need to start managing my fleet, right? That's what I think. After six months of heavy fighting, I've practically managed to recapture the Philippines from the Japanese. In the meantime, I've also been learning how supply lines work, which to be honest, I haven't fully grasped. The price for that was losing the entire Maldives. Not exactly the best trade-off. However, I'm preparing an invasion of Japan. I'm curious if it'll work here or if it'll be like the British Isles, where the whole island was basically empty. Japan is still fighting in China and they've taken some losses, so I'm researching better naval landings and also the atomic bomb just in case. Meanwhile, I'm attacking the Swedes and totally wrecking their army. After encircling part of their forces, I'm pushing towards them as fast as I can. The naval landings are prepared, only a few days left, naval superiority established, beachhead secured and honestly I'm pushing through nicely here. I'm really pushing through nicely. I probably shouldn't have landed my heavy armored divisions. Their organization is basically non-existent here, but the infantry is doing quite well. The invasion of Japan is going smoother than conquering the United States, which has always been a problem for me in the past. And now I've figured out how to manage my divisions. I just needed to wait for their organization to recover. And Japan has capitulated. Now I have a question. Is it worth vassalizing them? Though I might not even be able to. Because from what I see, my contribution to this war is really small and I haven't conquered much of Japan either. 
so I guess I've got a problem. Before I join this war, maybe I'll finish my invasion of Sweden, which is currently underway. Learning from my Japanese experience, I have launched naval landings with heavy armored divisions. They're holding their own, after all. The invasion of Sweden succeeded entirely in the meantime, so now the conflict with Russia looms, but I've got 130 days left before I can develop the atomic bomb. And unfortunately, I had to answer my allies' call to arms, since they're losing badly. I wonder if I'll even be able to hold this front or not. For now, I won't be attacking. To be honest, the Russians have way more armies here than I can field. At this moment, I noticed some plus signs here. I hadn't paid attention to them before. What are these? Oh, you can level them up? I totally forgot about that. I should probably pay more attention to the commanders I have, whether they have those modifiers for tank commanders. Oops, the only thing making me happy is that I have total air superiority, but my rear lines are probably getting trashed, right? Are they bombing me? I am calling all the factions into this war because I really don't have the strength to deal with whatever is attacking, but this is spamming my entire view. Can I turn off these notifications somewhere? Finally, Sweden has capitulated. I know a normal person would have done that in 5 minutes, but I think I'm still doing pretty well. So, if you've made it this far, write Lucas Noob in the comments and I'll pin a heart to your comment, but now I'll station my armored divisions here. Let them be. Only I can't assign them for some reason. I'll try to attack in a way that creates a nice encirclement and destroys part of the Russian forces. Or maybe we'll do it in Lithuania instead. There's one port here, another one much farther away. So we'll cut them off before Riga. Okay, there's a breakthrough. Now I'm pushing forward again, heading straight for Riga. I managed to cut off the ports in the south, at least one of them. I think the second one will fall soon too. And we've managed to create a small encirclement near Riga. Okay, maybe it's not a huge success, but still it's something. Oh no, don't tell me there's a passage here and they'll escape. But now, I definitely have them encircled. And the encirclement has been destroyed. And finally I have the atomic bomb, but the progress is quite slow, so I'm building more nukes. They'll be useful in Poland. Though my first nuclear power plant is only now being built in my country. No matter, maybe it'll be better in the future. Ah, I also need strategic bombers. I remember when wars with the Russians used to be easier. They would mindlessly attack from every direction and then you'd just burn through their manpower and after that you could easily break through their defenses and so on. But now it's a nightmare. There are 200 divisions standing on the border. How am I supposed to break through that? And I'll drop my first nuke here in Romania. Let's see how that works. We, it's flying. Don't tell me I just dropped a nuke on my own troops. Oops. That's probably not how it was supposed to go. Alright, this time I'll drop it further away so we don't take that territory too soon. And there it goes. And boom! Don't tell me I'll need a nuke for every single area like this. Oh no. But I guess I do. So I'm dropping nukes. I still have four left, so why not? They even wrote about it in the newspapers. It's so bright here. And I keep dropping them. And I'm breaking through Russian defenses. Straight to Smolensk. And a beautiful encirclement made in Romania. Well, almost. I still need to cut them off somewhere here. Kiev has fallen. Meanwhile, a beautiful encirclement has been made in Romania. Here's another encirclement, maybe in Lithuania or Ukraine. The place where the Russian revolution started has fallen. So Leningrad has fallen, and I'm dropping more nukes, which will help me create a really nice Russian encirclement near Vilnius. Why should I worry? Let's drop nukes, fewer German soldiers will die. Somewhere here, between I don't know what and I don't know what. Moscow is somewhere around here, right? I'm creating another giant encirclement. I think I'll destroy 60 divisions here. Wait, wait, some Russian traitor? I'll take his help. Where did he appear? Here, my opponents are resisting, so nuke! And the resistance disappears, and a large encirclement has been made. Eyeballing it, there are about 50 to 60 Russian divisions here. I think if the Russians lose this many troops, maybe they'll finally surrender, right? Well, not really surrender, not yet. Their support for the war is enormous, but I think without those divisions, I'll break the front and it'll be all downhill from here. I'll drop a bomb on Moscow. I wonder if they'll write about it in the paper somewhere. Uh, am I destroying infrastructure with this as well? Oh, they wrote about it. What a tragedy. I think you can see best on the logistics map which territories I've conquered. I wonder how well it was supplying the Russian armies. I had to change a few things in my divisions and now I'm proceeding with further attacks. Maybe I'll hold off on the north for now and drop a couple of nukes. Oh, and now, right? Just to open a path to Moscow. Nice. Moscow fell soon after. Another encirclement either near Moscow or its ruins. I think I've used 10 nukes by now. Okay, I'm taking losses, but I'm pushing the front, which, as you can see, loops back to the beginning to keep attacking further. I've assigned these fronts beautifully, I won't lie, but it's working. Near Stalingrad, I'm implementing my new military doctrine. First, a carpet bombing with nukes. Beautiful. And then my armies move in. And the carpet bombing of nukes led to the Soviet Union's capitulation. Now I've noticed there are additional demands like forcing them to dismantle their entire military industry. Why isn't there something like that in EU4, where you could, for example, force a country to dismantle all its forts or manufactories? That would be powerful. The Moscow Treaty was signed, and I've created a much larger empire. Though I have to admit, Italy has a lot of provinces that I could conquer too. Hmm. 
I think I'll rename these two cities, and I saw something about forming the Greater Reich somewhere, which I'm doing right now. I don't know what it gives me, apart from the name change, but so be it. Now, after the fall of Russia, there aren't many countries left outside of my faction. Mainly South America, Spain in Europe, and the Chinese front. I need to focus on the Chinese front, but first, I'll invade Spain. When it comes to research, I'm basically researching everything available. By the way, do people even use those advanced mechanized transports? I'm also producing one nuke every four days. Alright, Spain doesn't need to wait any longer for war, without allies. Naturally, I decided to apply the German Blitzkrieg doctrine. This allowed me to break through the Spanish fortifications immediately and, essentially, flood Spain with my army. Let's be honest, I wouldn't have been able to conquer Spain without nukes. Though, this is the first war where very few German soldiers died, and on the other side, one million casualties. Excellent, Spain has fallen, now it's time for Portugal, but I feel like I won't need nukes here since they only have 4 divisions. That's why I moved most of my armies to the Chinese front, this I didn't expect. Hmm, can I somehow persuade Portugal to adopt Nazism? I've also prepared an invasion of China, at least this time I'm not using tanks, appreciate that. Honestly, I completely forgot about them, so I'm moving them back to Japan for now. Whee! As for Portugal, I think the 200 divisions I forgot about will be enough. You won't believe what I just did. I researched the German-Russian alliance and ended up dismantling my entire faction. Alright, I'll just invite all those countries back into the faction because they might join the war against me. Like on China's side, for example. Then I'd lose everything, right? I'll just kick them out of the faction one by one. Later. Actually, I just realized I could use some air bases here to send my troops and bombers to China. Uh... Don't tell me the game is ending. No! So I guess we've answered the question of whether a noob like me can conquer the world in Hearts of Iron 4. No! Next time, I have to remember that the game ends in January 1949. But there's no way I'm not executing these invasion plans I prepared. And so many territories left to light up. Beautiful, from what I can see. Most of the landings were successful, right? More nukes. Boom! Now that I've added my tank divisions, China is falling. Very quickly. I even have a Chinese pocket. China has fallen and somehow I'm also at war with Italy. I have no idea how they got involved. I didn't call them into the war. But hey, I've definitely learned a lot from this campaign. So who knows? Maybe in 100 hours, I'll try another run like this. Also, I'm counting on your comments. Let me know if I should play this game again, take on some cool challenge, or if you enjoyed it. And in this episode, from Victoria 3, I took on the challenge of forming the People's European Union before the end of the game. And along the way, I created a super German.